happy second week of music, everybody. Mr. Rogers here once again with your Sonora Elementary Bobcat Band. Now, with today's lesson, what you will notice is right behind me, we've got the Google Classroom set up by myself, Mr. Rogers. We've seen this page. This is where we accessed our last lesson, of course. So, seems like so far everyone's gotten in. No worries. A um, few questions from people on uh, how to get to the post and, you know, making sure that we're clicking on all the right stuff. And it seems like to this point, everybody's gotten in. No huge complications. So, always send me an email or just send me, um, you know, you can have your parents call me on uh, my office phone. Uh, my extension is 4131, of course, but my email address is the R Rogers at SESK12.org. All right, so thank you, fourth grade. Send me any questions you got. Now we're going to navigate through here real quick, and you'll notice that in the documents, um, in the Google Classroom, that you have access to our sheet music. All right, so it's called the Recorder Resource. And this is a full-on packet. I'm giving you all the sheet music ahead of time. That way, every lesson, you're going to have that packet out. And bam, we're going to be playing. So hopefully you got to be with us in our last lesson. If you didn't have that chance, that's okay. You can go back to that lesson uh, right now and kind of catch up. And then you can come back to this video and uh, be with the rest of us. So hopefully you've picked up your recorder and your sheet music. Good to go if you haven't already. We have pickup times 1 to 3. Monday through Friday, as well as Tuesdays and Thursdays at 5 to 7 p.m. So, again, any questions, send me an email. Or, one thing I forgot to mention is, just go ahead and put a comment on any of the posts on Google Classroom. My email will tell me automatically when you comment on anything. Any questions, any comments whatsoever, that's a good spot as well. And I'll answer you in the next couple minutes once you click send. Now behind me, we've got the classroom set up and hopefully on the video, it's clear. I'm going to move on over here so you guys can hear me just a little better. So when we're going through, you can see you could scroll up and down. This is last week's lesson. Okay. When this video goes up, obviously it'll be above this. So in this case, I'm talking to you from the past, you will see something a little bit different. And you will click on this right here. Ooh, if you could see it, let me move this a little bit more. The recorder resource sheet music is right here. Boom. So I can open that up and you'll get the entire year's worth of sheet music on up here. So hopefully when we're back on campus at some point, we can actually play recorders together. Uh, but we'll see. I don't know what the rules are going to be for, you know, wind instruments and essentially breathing in a room like that. So... Go ahead and have this document pulled up. Last time, and if I can scroll through here quick enough, we went through all this information last time, so no need to go over that. There's the recorder. Okay, we ended off on a section here where we filled in the first few notes. Okay, so we're just going to complete that real fast. You should have done it on your own, and this is essentially me giving you the answers, okay? So if you got stuck at any point or if you feel like you just want the answers, go ahead and have that sheet out. Okay, hopefully you have the sheet out by now. We're going to continue on with everything beneath. I'm going to try to zoom in. That didn't work. Let me try that again with, oh, there we go. That's a little better. I'm going to try to fit everything within the frame still, though. Okay, so we're going to use the color red for myself, but you can use a pen, you can use a pencil. It doesn't matter what color. So far, we've filled in. From here, E, F, G. Then the next note was A, I believe. Then we had B. And there we are. If we went further than that, my apologies, I'll, I'll review with you. But notice this, that I'm writing every letter capitalized. Lowercase letters aren't used in music notation. Everything has to be capitalized because there are certain symbols in music 
that look like lowercase letters. And we don't want to mistake, say, a flat symbol, which looks like a lowercase b, uh, with the actual note b. Uh, there we go. <laughs> I'm just navigating with the camera right here. Got to make sure all your letters are capitalized so we don't mix up different symbols. Okay, so from earlier, remember face in the space. All right, F-A-C-E. That's going in order. Bam, one, two, three, four. Face in the space. Think about if it's on a line or a space. That note right there is on a space. F-A-C-E. That letter is C. Okay, so there's C. Moving on up. Remember, notes on the lines. We think every good band does fine. Can match up with your hand as well. Every good band does fine. Okay, so from that point, we are on D. D for dog, okay? Now I'm just going to do a couple more. Then I'm just going to write in the rest of them because you should have done this on your own at home. Okay? Is this on a line or a space, this note right here? It's on a space. It's in between the lines, okay? So remember, face in the space, face in the space, face in the space. Yeah, that's the dance we do here in the band room. <laughs> so F-A-C-E is that letter name. Remember, capitalized every time because, again, music symbols, some of them look like lowercase letters. Okay, on the very top note there, we are on a line. So we got every good band does fine. Fine starts with an F. So let's do that. Okay. This will be the last one before I just write the rest of them in, okay? So is that on a line or a space? We drop way down to the bottom line, okay? Again, every good band does fine. Every is on the bottom. Every starts with the letter E. Now, you'll notice that these notes are going from low to high, okay? Then we drop down low again. That's actually the way it sounds in music. So say if I was going to play that on the piano like this, if I was going to start on, say, an E, there's E, then F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, then the next note goes up to a high E or a low E. It's going to be a low E. Ah, we're right back where we started. That note will sound the same as that note. As long as it's written on the same spot within the musical staff, no worries, it'll have the same sound. So here we go. I'm going to write in the rest, and if you have all the answers written down in yourself, just go ahead and double check with me. So we got G, B, I'm going to move over here, then here we got F, then I think this one's kind of covered up on my screen, but I believe that's an A, D, E, now we're jumping up way high up here. To the other E. Oh, sorry, my mistake. That's actually an F. <laughs> Oops. Then we got E right here. I got ahead of myself. Then we have C. Then we got B. E. F, B. So again, my mistake on this guy right here. <laughs> I thought bottom line, top line, got to mix them up in my head. So if you have all those notes written out, now it's time to move on. Okay, we're going to move on to some rhythm stuff. Now, when I move on, it's going to erase automatically. I'm going to be scrolling through. So. Notice that we have big leaps here. We have different what are called intervals. The interval is a space between notes. Sometimes you have really big intervals, sometimes a very small interval like it is up here. All the letters are sort of in alphabetical order as you work from low to high. Okay, scrolling on up, scrolling on up. All right, going on from here, everybody. The table below, oh, actually, let's work on counting music. Now, counting music, we don't think about numbers while we're playing music, but we use numbers to learn what different note values are. So the table below shows the most of the notes you will be using in this recorder method. 
it tells the name of the note, a rhythm name that you can call it, and how many beats the note will get in 4-4 four, four time. 4-4 four, four time, that means that we have 4 beats total. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4 before we go back to 1. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. For those of you that are dancers, typically you count to 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, right? You think 8 beats all together. In music, we only count to 4. But the other 1, 2, 3, 4, so say 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. When I transfer it over for you dancers, you can think of the 5, 6, 7, 8. But we don't say 5, 6, 7, 8 out loud in music. It's just 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. It always goes back to 1. Okay? We have different types of notes. The three we're going to focus on right now are quarter note, half note, whole note. Those are the only three we'll worry about right now because much later on in the book, that's when we actually start using eighth notes and dotted half notes. Okay, quarter notes get one beat, half notes get two beats, whole notes get four beats. Now, to memorize how many beats each note gets, it might be better, in my opinion, to start from whole note. So whole notes are four beats. Now think about four, four times, there's only four beats. So you're filling the whole amount. That's what gives you four beats. You're filling that whole amount. Now, if we cut four and a half, we have a half note and half of four is two. Now let's go back to the whole note, a quarter of a whole note, right? One quarter would end up being one Beat. You're taking one of those quarters and making it a quarter note. So that's how those words can line up. Another way you can think about it is if you imagine a dollar, how many quarters go into a dollar? Four, okay? We're splitting it up into four pieces. You can fit four quarter notes. If you put them together, you have a whole note, okay? And if you split that in half, you got a half note. So you can either use the money or you can use fractions which i believe as fourth graders you do maybe begin fractions at this grade i may be wrong maybe you learn fractions in third grade but you can apply those those mathematical skills to understand musical notation is what we call things all right a rest is a silent beat the table below shows most of the rests you'll be using in this recorder method it tells you the name of the rest a rhythm name now that's a fancy word right there it has rh rhythm. So we don't go rhythm. <laughs> we don't pronounce the first H, but rhythm name that you can call it and how many beats the rest will get in 4-4 four, four time. Again, we're revisiting 4-4 four, four time. The notes tell you that there's going to be sound, so we will make sound. Rests tell you where to not make sound, but they still have value to it. They still have quarter, so say if we go from the bottom, whole rest, four beats, half rest, two beats, quarter rest, one beat. Do you see the pattern going on, right? So whole means four, half means two, quarter means one. And it'll mean that between the rests and the notes. Okay, so a whole note will tell you you have four beats of sound, a whole rest, bam is a whole is four beats of silence okay and that applies to half rest and quarter rest as well okay and you've got different symbols the whole rest and the half rest they look a bit similar so if you imagine that kind of looks like a hat in my opinion for some of you it may look like something a little bit different but if you imagine a gentleman normally takes his hat off to a lady okay a whole gentleman will take his half hat off for the lady when she is in his presence. So you take the hat off, the hat is upside down now. So that makes him a whole gentleman. Oh, but if you're a half a gentleman, you're leaving your hat on. That's not very respectful to the lady. So you're leaving your hat on, you're half a gentleman. And that is where the right side up half rest reminds me of. So got an upside down hat, got a right side up hat. So half a gentleman, whole gentleman. There we go. That's one way for me to remember. 
Quarter rest is pretty unique symbol. It kind of looks like a lightning bolt. So if I zoom in a little bit, hopefully that adds some clarity to it. So quarter rest, half rest, whole rest. You have different amount of beats, one beat, two beats, four beats, going from smallest to biggest, all right? Now a lot more, uh, this will make a lot more sense when we're actually using it in the music. Music is, I mean, these are the two most boring lessons I give all year are the very beginning because we're talking about the music. We're not playing the music yet. So we'll get there really, really quick. Okay, let's fill in this chart right here. We're gonna zoom in a little more. Bam, go to have your pencils out. Now, if you have this on your computer screen, uh, you can print it out and draw, uh, or sorry, you can write in the values of the notes. Um, you don't have to print it out though. If you need a copy, again, swing by the school and pick it up at the gym during those times that I mentioned earlier. Pencil. use the color blue this time. I like blue. So quarter note right there. I'm giving you that first answer. You'll notice that there's the head of the note and then the stem. That's the line connected and it's filled in. Okay. That tells us it's a quarter note. Bam. That gets one beat. Okay. Now right below that you have kind of that lightning bolt symbol. All right. What kind of rest is that? It's a quarter rest. So remember quarters get one beat. There we are. So both are going to get one beat. One is sound, one is silence. Okay, now does this look like a note or a rest? Right there. I'm just looking at my computer <laughs> camera, making sure I'm pointing at the right thing. Right there is a note. Okay, is it a half note or a whole note? It's going to be a whole note. And you'll know because there's no stem attached to it. It sort of looks like the same not filled in uh, oval like the half note, but there's no stem. That's going to give you four beats. All right, then after that, we've got, ooh, we have one option left as far as notes go. That's going to be a half note. What's half of four? Two. Bam. Okay, so one beat, one beat, four beats, two beats. Moving on, number five. This is a what? A whole gentleman or a half gentleman? Oh, sorry, my mistake. Is it a half a gentleman or a whole gentleman? Okay, it's half of a gentleman because the hat is on it's right side up what's half in in the numbers right with the beats we have two beats because that's half of four right okay ignore that one ignore that one we're doing number eight this is going to be the opposite of number five right whole gentleman whole gets how many beats four okay so I have that all written in. We're going to start moving on. Good job, good job, everybody. Y'all are hanging in there. I'm going to erase that. Scrolling on down. Okay, final step before we start playing our instruments, I believe. Okay, good. Yep, we're going to have our instruments out in just a minute. For this guy right here, we talk about measures and bar lines. Music is divided into short sections called measures or bars. The measures are marked off by bar lines right here. That bar line tells you a new measure has begun. Okay, so you're playing along this measure. Then a vertical line happens. That's the bar line. Now we're back to beat one. So we think one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. Ah, does it make sense now? That's why we count to four. Only to four. And then back to one is because we go back to the beginning Ooh, we go back to one at the beginning of the next measure. Okay, there's a double bar line at the end of each piece of music. So right here is the double bar line that tells you the song is over. Double bar lines look like there's a, a thicker line and a thinner line. Bar lines on their own, bam, it's just the thin line. Double bar line tells you the song is over. That's it, that's the end. Okay, and just as a review, we have a treble clef. Bam, we went over that last class. That tells you the instrument's going to sound higher. Treble is up here. Bass clef. Is in the lower range. And the notes are in a different order when you're reading bass clef. But you'll learn that in band next year, you trombone, tuba, and baritone players. Okay. Next page, everybody. 
Let us begin. Okay, so we learn how to first use our air properly on the recorder. On the recorder, you don't want to use a whole lot of air. You're going to get a bunch of squeaks out on your instrument if you use too much air. It's very gentle, very gentle the way that we use air in music. On wind instruments, this is a universal thing is you want to use consistent airstream. You don't want to use the kind of air. Let me see if I can get the mic a little bit higher up there. There we go. You don't want to use the kind of airstream that's bumpy, right? So you don't want... You want an airstream that's more like... The airstream is the same the whole time. Now, you'll notice that that was kind of loud, right? That was a bit too much air altogether. But if I back off on the airstream, but I make it consistent... Let me see if this makes a difference. You can hear it a little bit, right? Much quieter than the first example. When we're using the recorder, we use an articulation. Now, articulations tell you how hard you're going to tongue and how soft you're going to tongue. So we think the letter T, that's too harsh for the recorder, okay? We use do instead of to. So in this case, I would go. Now I'm moving this guy because this is made for blocking my air. So all you hear is my voice instead of my, instead of my breathing, right? So, but I'll move it every now and then when I'm demonstrating uh, the breathing pattern. So let me move this. My screensaver keeps wanting to turn on. So when we're using the recorder, we use do, not to. Okay, you'll get too many squeaky notes out. And that's about it when it comes to air. Okay, really it comes with practice. That's the most important part. I'm going to come a little bit closer here and demonstrate to you all how to hold the recorder properly. When we start off on the recorder, we do not hold it with two hands yet. Okay, in fact, we're only going to worry about our left hand right now. So the left hand right here, uh, make sure it's this hand. Okay, this is your left hand, making sure that we have the left thumb is going to cover the hole on the back. Okay, so cover that. Then it should be in line with your pointer finger, then the next finger, then the next finger. And after that, we're not going to use the left pinky. In the future, we'll use the right pinky. You'll notice that there's a final um, opening right there. But we usually just go one, two, three, then one, two, three, four with the right hand. The right hand, however, you don't need to worry about this. You can bring it all the way down here. Make sure you don't cover that final hole, though. You're just going to hold it like this, okay? That way, your fingers don't get in the way here, and you don't accidentally play the wrong note in the beginning. Later on, we'll move it up here when we're learning the lower notes. But right now, we're learning our very first note. It's going to be called B. Now, it's the B that's on the middle of the staff. And you'll already see it right here. Okay, so if I zoom in, you'll see right over here is the letter B. Again, capital B, center line. It stands for band. Every good band does fine. Then, sorry, <laughs> it's kind of the reverse when it's on the camera. So you'll see right here you have all the holes listed off on your recorder. It'll highlight on the left side your thumb. Okay, so this one represents your thumb right there. That one represents your first finger. So we're starting off like this, right hand all the way down. Thumb covered all the time. Your thumb is going to cover that hole on the back all of the time. So fourth grade, make sure you have that covered. Otherwise, you'll end up playing the wrong note by mistake. Let me check on the time here. Okay, cool. So we got some time. Right here, we got our first finger. The other two are going to hover over the other two holes. So you're not going to hold it like this. You're going to hold it like that. And you'll see from the side angle, they're not actually down. Okay, I'm just kind of hovering over. All right, here we are. So this is our first note. Listen to me first. And we do a thing that's called echoing. All right, so I will say echo me. Then I'll play a rhythm. It'll be like do, 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 do. Then right away you'll play it with me. And remember, if your note squeaks a little bit, that doesn't matter, right? 
we're just continuing on. <laughs> the first attempt is going to sound a little funky. You might laugh a little bit. That's fine. Music is funny sometimes. So when we're playing through, I want the note to sound like this. So go ahead and match me on that note real quick. Go ahead and play. If your note is sounding more like this, <laughs> that means you are not placing your mouth correctly over the mouthpiece. So you got to make sure that when you're playing, you're not barely putting your mouth on her. This is actually a step I skipped. I meant to show you how to put your mouth on the mouthpiece. But from here, make sure your lips are kind of going around it a little bit, not Now, if your sound is more like this, that raspy tone might hurt your ears a little bit. That means you're using just a bit too much air. So same stream, your stream is up here, but my stream is like here. It's consistent, but it's a little bit more mellow. Make sure you use do as well, not too. You got that. Hee-haw, hee-haw. That's <laughs> sort of like a donkey playing a recorder. Make sure you use do all the time. All right, here we go. Let's echo. I play first. Again, this note is B. Then you play after me. So echo me. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, 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 bum. job. Yeah, very nice. Now you'll hear that I incorporated. Incorporate means I included rests along with my notes and the notes that was weird rests along with my notes and when you are resting that's your opportunity to take a breath now when you breathe make sure you don't tense up because otherwise your sound will be tense as well so anytime you have a rest take a breath we're moving on everybody that sounds awesome we're going to play our first song now notice here we've got all kinds of stuff going on we got notes all over the page and when we play through, normally in class, I have a speaker that's playing music along with you guys, and it sounds really, really, really fantastic. But in this case, if I play music over the speaker, then it'll blast out the microphone. So what we're going to do is I'm going to give you access to all the recordings for every song. That way you can play along with them, and it's so much more fun. It's so much more fun than just playing with me. So I'll give you the recordings. It'll be on Google Classroom. I'll give you a link to the uh, my Google Drive, and it'll be a folder that has all the recordings for every song. So this would just be number one. Oop, wrong way. Just B. That's the name of it. So play along with it. It has cool like guitars and drums and all this stuff that you play along with. So in this case, we have quarter notes. One, two, three, four of them, right? Because that there are only four beats per measure. The way we know this is by what we call common time. Right there's the treble clef. These are all sharp symbols. You don't need to worry about that right now, though. Then common time. That's what the C stands for. Common time just means it's the most common time signature. Four beats per measure. How many beats per measure? Four. And it's that way the whole time. So you can fit four quarter notes. Now, half notes get two beats, right? So we have one, two of them. 2 plus 2 is 4, okay? That fills in the entire measure. Then, if I bring us back here a little bit more, right here we've got four more quarter notes, then a whole note. Now, the way the whole note will sound is... You only tongue it one time. Every note you only tongue once, okay? So, if I was going to play this, it would go... Da, 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 da. 
Da 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 da. Holding on, and you want to take a breath as late as possible. Then you move on to this line. Da 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 da. There we go. Did you notice that I took a breath right here? Yeah, you could take a breath after a note. Just make sure it doesn't cut off the note too early. Da, da, that would be too short. It would be da, da, da. Every time you take a breath with the gut. Here we go. Let's go and play through the first song. Remember, right hand is down here, left hand is up here. Never have your right hand up here because next year when you all are playing like clarinets and saxophones and flutes, um, that is why we make sure the left hand is on top because on those instruments, it's impossible to learn them uh, with the right hand on top. So I want to make sure you guys understand that's why the recorder where we got to make sure the left hand is on top because it'll help you with band next year. Here we go. Let's go ahead and play through our first song. And again, if you make a mistake, that's not a big deal. You can rewind this video and play with me again and try to fix the mistake, but only after you play through the whole song with me, okay? So no rewinding, no cheating. Let's play together. I'll point along. One, two, this is with B. One, two, ready. That was a huge, huge amount of air I had to use. <laughs> Throughout the whole tune, you'll realize, you know, the recorder doesn't take all that much air, but you still have to fill up to your full capacity to be able to play through the whole song beautifully. And again, these are long tones is what we would call playing a whole note like that. We want to focus on the tone quality. So again, if your sound is like this, that means you're overblowing. That means you're using too much air all at once. So conserve a little bit. There's a little bit of a rasp going on with my instrument today. I think because maybe some stuff is in it. Your guys' instruments are brand new. There you go. That's a much better sound. Ooh, let me show you one trick because that'll be it for today, our next lesson. Ooh, let me check on the time, honestly. That's all the time we'll have for today. But I wanted to show you a cool trick before we head out. If you take your mouthpiece off of the instrument, okay? And if you take your hand and you, right? It's gonna make that high pitch sound. You can cover the opening on the end right here and you could change the sound effect. You could also, let me see. You could also like take a pencil like that. I prefer this though. Era, era, fresh. <laughs> so there we are, fourth grade. Experiment with some fun sounds next time. When we start off, I mean, our goal usually is to play three to four songs every class after we get through, right, all that stuff we had to talk about last lesson and today. So we're going to continue on to number two, the number three, number four, number five. That'll be our next lesson. And again, I'm going to upload the recordings to each of these for the book for you all to play with. All right. So really, really happy to have you. And uh, I hope I get to meet you soon, right? I haven't gotten to see your lovely faces I have taught the eighth graders for the last five years now. And, uh, well, actually, this will be the fifth year. I've been teaching them for four years now. So lots of days ahead of us. I know it might feel like, hey, we got the separation and, you know, soon you'll be back on campus and we'll figure out what instruments we'll be allowed to play. But don't, don't worry about that lost time. We'll have a bunch of time in music and it'll be a spectacular time playing all the instruments that I'm actually getting to look at way back here in the back of the room. We have all this percussion equipment and it's really, really cool stuff. Once you guys enjoy the space, bam, we'll be rocking and rolling. So keep practicing, experiment with the tone on your instrument, and I'll see you next time. See you later.